Welcome to Perspectives El Paso. I'm Professor Leon Blevins, Professor of Government at El Paso Community College. As you've just noticed, we've entered a very interesting location here in El Paso. And for today's program, we have a very interesting person to talk with. I want to show you my tie. Since we're in an art museum, I decided to wear an artsy tie. This tie was drawn by a 12-year-old girl named Sarah for a fundraiser for Save the Children and she calls it dads. It shows the different professional clothing that different fathers wear. So I have a special guest and you're gonna be surprised at what he's wearing today. This is Hal Marcus, well-known artist in El Paso, Leon? Texas. Thank you for having me here. I love your outfit. Mm, it's Paisley. <laughs> Paisley. Purple Paisley. Okay. I'm a flower, flower child from oh. the 60s. Oh, well, I can identify with that. You were born when? 1951. Oh, well, you're just a child. I was born in 1937. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> but we've had a great time. And I've had you on my show before. Yes, it's been about four years. Four years ago this week, I believe. That's, I wow. checked my records Incredible. before I came to the program. And uh, we're not going to just replay that kind of story because we are now in a unique setting, the El Paso Museum of Art, downtown El Paso. And you have a major exhibition here. And I've seen some of your exhibitions before, but never here. That's right. Tell this us is about my, this. This is my first solo exhibit at the El Paso Museum of Art. I have 50 works of art, ranging 45 years with a work. I have work here from 1970 up until present. Uh, I have sculptures, I have drawings, I have prints, I have oils, I have acrylics. Wow. So it's, it's kind of a little retrospective, I guess you'd call it. Right on the outside of the gift shop on the first floor of the El Paso Museum of Art is quite an honor to be here. It's, oh. it's a 50 year overnight success. <laughs> but you had to work at it a bit and spend I some money to, to reach this. I had to work my butt off, I did. <laughs> uh, tell me about, you used to work at this museum in the old location at Brown and Montana. Right, when I was uh, about 20 years old, I got a job at the El Paso Museum of Art and I was an art teacher. Prior to that, I had taken classes as a teenager and then uh, about 10 years ago, I was selected to be on the advisory board of the Museum of Art. Mm -hmm. And then I became chairman of the advisory board. And then I was, uh, they used me as an advisor to some of the exhibits on El Paso art, especially early El Paso art, like Manuel Acosta, mm -hmm. and some of the early books that they published. And about a year and a half ago, I was notified that I would be having this exhibit in conjunction with the Marc Chagall that they're bringing in. Oh, how wonderful, because right. some of your paintings reflect some influence of Marc right. Chagall. Right, I was greatly influenced as a young man by the work by the great painter Marc Chagall. Okay, we need to tell the audience, okay. the viewing audience. The opening of this exhibit also involves the presentation of a book that you right. have just Right, there's finished. actually two things that are recently published. There's this one here called Hal Marcus Art and Times. It's a 250 page book. It has 515 images. Um, and it was written by Monica Gomez. And it's all in, in full color. It's a delightful book. And there's a lot of stories in here that makes for good reading. The other publication that the museum put out is a catalog here. And it's a catalog of the 40 works of art that are in the exhibit. Uh, and this is available at the Museum of Art. Both of these are available to Museum of Art. And this one's available at the museum and also at the Hal Marcus Gallery. So we want to urge all of you out there in TV land to get down here and see this exhibit before it is taken down. It right. ends when? It ends January 24th. So we still have quite a bit of time. That 2016. Can get down here. Yes. And uh -huh. These are in the gift shop here, and you right. have some in the of gift shop. We also gallery. have cards and prints and uh, memorabilia from this exhibit in the gift shop. So. It's a real opportunity for El Paso to come on down. The exhibit is free, mm -hmm. and I think they're open every day of the week except for Mondays. Okay, good. Uh, I want to start with you and your family and the art that you've done. Right. I've seen your self-portrait, and I've seen your magic bus that mm -hmm. shows you driving the family. Mm -hmm. So for this first half, let's talk about family and friends, and okay. we'll talk about El Paso and this mm -hmm. area right. in the second part of the program. I'm going to move over here a little bit so that our camera can focus in right. on well, this, the, the magic bus. The painting behind me is called the magic bus, and uh, you know, Leon, I was a flower child, I mentioned that, but I was actually in, in San Francisco in the Summer of Love, 1968, and there was a band called The Who, and they came out with a, with a song called The Magic Bus. Okay. Uh, but this is me and my family. I'm driving the uh, van there, 
and those are my daughters dancing and their band and my son is up on top of the bus playing the the bongos and and my wife is in the the back of my van uh, with our two dogs my wife Patricia Medici <laughs> so that's just sort of like there's a rainbow in the sky there's hula hoops people making a uh, playing instrument and my friend Gene Keller is playing the the big cello there on the hood so that's uh, that's my family and okay. my extended family uh, with a magic bus okay. I have several pieces in this exhibit I have one called Sunset Heights uh, which is me and my wife sitting on a uh, swing swinging uh, above uh, where, where I live in Sunset mm -hmm. Heights okay. I have an old Victorian home that I've lived in since the 70s uh, and then there's another hey, before we go past that yeah. give us the address of your location okay there. well my gallery is at 1308 North Oregon and directly across the street at 1319 is my 100 year old Victorian home where I have my studio and we have a, a museum there really because we, we have the work by 100 local artists in my private collection. So um, I'm, you know, I've been born and raised here in El Paso and we've been collecting art and supporting local artists. We've represented probably 500 local artists since we opened up 20 years ago. Okay, give us your telephone number if you <laughs> wish and your yeah. website. Well, yeah, the telephone number is 915-533-9090 and it's halmarcus.com. Wow. There you have it. So now you can clue in. Tell us a little bit about your self-portrait. It's mm -hmm. in this gallery. We right. want to be sure that we show the audience that. Right. Your self-portrait. And then uh, you have some pictures of your daughters. Right, right. Okay, tell us about those. Well, the two self-portraits that I have here, one is from the 90s, and it's uh, from my dark period. Uh, it was when I was going through my divorce, and, okay. and uh, I painted all my canvases black. There's that portrait, and it's called Tree Man. The other one is one I did back in, in the, uh, about 1995, and it's kind of a, a cubistic, fauvistic, colorful uh, uh, painting of myself. It's about 14 inches by 14 inches, and those are the two self-portraits that are in the catalog in the book and on display here today. Okay. The other painting that's become really popular since I've had this exhibit is called Hija del Sol, and um, there's a billboard of that uh, painting outside uh, facing the Plaza Theater that we'll go take a look at on the way out. Uh, and it's become a pretty popular painting because it was on the front cover of the invitations. And uh, it's just a large, people think it's a Madonna, but it's, it's my daughter Adelaide, uh, who's uh, an artist in her own right and a performer. And so that painting is also in the exhibit inspired by my children. Okay. Uh, any other of the paintings out through here that uh, you have woven your family into? Well, yes, we have one called The Wedding Portrait, and, and that's kind of humorous because there's a yin-yang. Uh, the, the groom is upside down and the bride is right side up, and, and it's what we, I use for my wedding invitation. So it's called The Wedding Portrait, and um, it, it, there's a yin-yang quality uh, to that. It's, it's, it's quite, quite humorous. Practically all the paintings here are somehow inspired by, by, my, by my family, okay. even uh, though most of them are inspired by the city of El Paso and Juarez. Okay, now what, how do you classify Marc Chagall's paintings in your paintings? Obviously, and they're not realism, they're not exactly surrealistic. How do you classify this? Well, I think of my work as folk art, you know, with a bent towards modernism. Um, the uh, relation to Marc Chagall is that he was Jewish, I'm Jewish, okay. uh, and he was uh, in love with his community, which was, uh, was a young man, it was Russia, a small town in Russia, and then later on it was Paris. So what I have is I have this sort of uh, romantic view, like Chagall did, mm -hmm. um, of love and beauty, and I used El Paso and Juarez as my background. So we have some similarities. Okay. How does it feel to have such a major exhibit like this? Well, you know, when I was told, I was pretty much in shock because, I, like we said, I worked here, I've been on the advisory board. Uh, but bringing the artwork up to a higher standard into the El Paso Museum of Art, which is one of the most beautiful uh, museums in the nation, it really has a very good reputation, uh, it, it elevates my our work to a, a higher level. And uh, being that I've been a part of the community for so long, and now I have this this solo exhibit, it's, I'm in shock. I mean, I mean, it's quite an honor. And I've been bringing groups through, I've been doing docent training, and now with this video on Perspectives El Paso, it it's just puts myself in a bigger light. Most people know me for my Mercado Juarez, you know, right. uh, and some of those uh, paintings that I've done. 
but they have no idea that I did the sculpture. They have no idea of the paintings I did when, in the 70s. I have sculptures here, Leon, that I did when I was 19 years old. You know, paintings that I painted when I was 19 years old. Good. So uh, we can see the progress right. that you have made over the, the years. The sculptures, yeah, the paintings. Uh, there's one called The Piano Man, uh, which we'll show, you know, okay. during the uh, filming here. And it was, I did it when I was 19 years old, and I hadn't seen it for 45 years. I borrowed it. Many of the pieces in this exhibit were borrowed from uh, patrons who bought the paintings okay. 40 years ago. So for them to all come together is very surreal. Well, I notice you have a loop here. For people right. that come, they can right. see this loop that runs for mm -hmm. several minutes. And uh, I ask you, and others have asked you, how you define art. I don't, I don't think I'll replay that one. But I'm going to ask you this question. Do you think of yourself as somewhat a philosopher? using your art to help people to think about life and how they feel about themselves and others? Well, that's a good question. You know, there is a, a philosophy behind it all. Uh, it's basically, you know, love and beauty. You know, everything that's going on in the world today, is sometimes you forget about the wonder of life. And, mm -hmm. and what I try to do with my colors and with my themes is to celebrate where I am, the El Paso border region, but also that the answer to all the problems in the world is basically love and beauty and art. And so, that, so I am a philosopher in, in that respect. Okay, today there are students walking around behind us over here. Right, right. Some of them are doing art appreciation reports. Right. Before we leave this first segment, what would you tell a student about doing art? Well, I mean, if they are an aspiring artist, I would tell them go to every single museum that you can. I would tell them to uh, work every day um, because you have to be disciplined. There's no such thing as an overnight success. And uh, just, you know, don't believe everything your teachers and your parents say, because I was, uh, uh, my, my, my parents tried to get me uh, to change my mind. They, they said, you will starve to death if you're an artist. So they did everything they could to um, sway me against being an artist, because the odds are, are, are terrible. But, uh, you know, I, I believe, and I would tell them to believe in their dream. Oh, very good. Well, that's about half of the program, so it's going too fast. <laughs> oh, it's okay. We've got a lot of, lot of bases uh, to So cover. we're going to take a break right here, and we'll be back in just a minute. Stepping out of bed. It's easy to take for granted. You work, eat, play, sleep, and get out of bed the next morning. Seems simple. But if you're one of 25 million individuals in the United States living with major depression, sleep isn't always so easy. Neither is navigating your daily life free of guilt or hopelessness, or having the ability to enjoy time out with friends, make simple decisions, enjoy hobbies, or go to work. Major depression is the leading cause of disability across the United States, and without treatment, the frequency and severity of symptoms tend to increase over time. However, there is hope. Major depression is treatable, and there is no one-size-fits-all approach. Today, there are a variety of treatment options to choose from. The key is to get an evaluation and find a treatment plan that is right for you. Free education, information, and support programs are available. You are not alone. We can help. Welcome back to the second half of this very interesting interview with Mr. Hal Marcus, one of the outstanding artists of El Paso, Texas. In the first part of this program, we talked about Hal Marcus himself and members of his family. For this second half, we want to talk about people and places. And Hal Marcus sometimes weaves himself into some of these places, as you well know. Hal, welcome back for this last Thank half you, of the Leon. program. Thank you, Leon. I'm glad to be back. And we've moved over just a little bit, and we now have a different picture behind us. Uh, tell us about this picture. Well, for those of you all just tuned in, we're here at El Paso Museum of Art, and right behind me is the Avenida Juarez, and that's how Juarez used to look back in the old days. As a child, my grandmother would take me to Juarez because my father had a grocery store in El Paso, and we would buy fruits and vegetables in Juarez from my father's grocery store. And we would go to Avenida Juarez. And this picture here, I am actually with my family in the back seat of the taxi cab, and uh, we have the musicians, we have the tacos, we have the dentist, we have the city market. You can get anything there. You can get divorced, you can get married, you can buy a lottery ticket, you can go to a bar, you can get a taco burrito. Uh, so this is basically everything that I experienced as a young person. 
in, in, in Avenida Juarez. I remember as a young person that my stepfather and my mother would come to El Paso and to Juarez. We'd take a taxi and go to different places, and it was a wild ride. Did, yeah. did it happen to you sometimes, the taxi driver's honking on his horn and oh, trying to get people say, out Come on in, take a look, take a look. Everybody was <laughs> wanting to show you their newest uh, arts and crafts and their bar and their the bridal gowns, you name it. Well, we used to love to go to the market. It was a fascinating place. So you actually drew some paintings based upon that. Right, yes. And I was inspired by Avenida Juarez. And I also did a very famous piece called the El Mercado Juarez. It's the marketplace in Juarez. Now, you also drew a lot of fruits and vegetables based upon what you saw in your father's location. Right, that's store. right. I was worked in my father's. He had the first big eight store in, uh -huh. in, uh, in El Paso. OK. Now tell us some about these places. You've done some drawings of some very famous buildings here in the El Paso area. And uh, so let's start. I don't know which one you want to start with. Okay, well, the El Paso, we've got a really uh, important painting that's here today. It's called the, uh, I, it was the Green Cellist, okay? And it was inspired by the Marc Chagall picture, which I have right here, okay. which is also on display at the El Paso Museum of Art. And that's why I was selected to do this show. But the green cellist is floating up above the sky at the Plaza Theater. And it was commissioned by the El Paso Symphony Orchestra. And uh, I am sitting in the, in the seats there with my wife. And the children are, are watching the um, extraterrestrial cellist. And uh, the, you know, the interior of the Plaza Theater is so fantastic. Right. So, that's one of the paintings in this exhibit that's a particular place in El Paso. Another one is uh, what I call Feliz Navidad, and it's of uh, St. Patrick's Church and all of downtown, and there's a posada. And my wife and I are right behind three nuns in the bottom corner, um, <laughs> and they're selling churros and tacos, and there's the Matachina dancers, and there's Santa Claus, and uh, it's a real slice of life for El Paso. You remind me of Alfred Hitchcock. Do you remember that he used to weave himself in just a little bit of cameo into his movies? And he, uh, he, yes, I do. I, I didn't know that I, re I reminded you of uh, Hitchcock, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm in some of my paintings. Okay. Right. All right. Another piece that we have here today is called Celebrate El Paso, and it's kind of a scenario from Scenic Drive, and it actually the first painting in El Paso that has the X, and it also has the ballpark in it. What's the X about? Well, uh, it was it was by That's an in artist. Juarez. That's it was, in yeah, Juarez. Yeah, it's in Juarez. It's by an artist named Sebastian, who's a wonderful monumental uh, artist uh, from Mexico, and it's just a large uh, sculpture, and there, you can actually go inside of it. Uh, you can you can go inside of it, and I believe they have a. Uh, a gallery in, in, in the middle of it. Okay. Uh, well, I noticed uh, the first time I really saw a major work of yours was at the Shamazal Memorial Theater. Right. And I have a number of pictures taken with right. me or someone else right. in front yes. of that. Uh -huh. and, uh, so tell us about that. How was that commissioned? Well, that wasn't actually a commission. It was a painting that I had done, and it's on uh, a temporary loan uh, uh, to, the, to the Shamazal Theater, but it's called uh, El Paso Gracias a Dios. Mm -hmm. or loosely translated to the El Paso Thanksgiving. And it's about the, uh, about the Spaniards coming here in 1598, uh, going through El Paso, and it's kind of a dream of, uh, of El Paso at, at that period of time. Um, and it has the big sun in the middle of it, and that's at the, at the Chamazal Theater. Now, you mentioned a while ago Sunset Heights. Right. A little swing in one of those right, pictures. Right, yes. Have you done others from Sunset Heights where you live? Uh, yes, I have, you know, but the one in the show today is, uh, shows Juarez, it shows UTEP, and it shows uh, many of the landmarks, the freeway uh, going through uh, El Paso. I'm trying to think of what other ones we have here that uh, show El Paso. Uh, oh, there's the one called Under the Rainbow, and that's of UTEP. And it, it's like UTEP through a kaleidoscope. Um, so that's a very significant painting. It's taken from a mountain in Sunset Heights, and it has a monk and his two sons with him overlooking um, the Tibetan style um, Bhutanese architecture of UTEP. Okay. Now I mentioned we, this, this segment we're talking about people and places. Right. And you've covered most of the major paintings about places. Mm -hmm. But I noticed also something at this gallery. I see a number of beautiful women and you mentioned that you right. love to draw women. Uh, I have an artist friend, well, I have more than one artist friend that tell me that the human body, it seems to be the hardest thing for them to draw. 
Well, did you run into that? Uh, you know, yeah, that's correct. But also, you know, the figurative works are in most of my paintings. I've done a series, and many of them are in this exhibit of, called the Harlequins, and they're basically musicians, mm -hmm. like the green cellist. But there's also uh, another one here called Pondering the Unknown, where a woman becomes a musical instrument. And then there's another one called Amore, which has a uh, fellow playing, a harlequin playing a musical instrument, that the musical instrument is being transformed into a woman. Um, so harlequins I use a lot because, uh, well, I'm a percussionist and I'm also a performing artist, but my children, uh, now living in California, have an entertainment company. And, and it's literally kind of like a circus. They're, they are type rope walkers, uh, snake charmers, uh, belly dancers, musicians, um, mermaids. They're actually professional mermaids living <laughs> in California. Yeah, and they swim in the ocean in the swimming pools. Um, so that influence on my artwork uh, makes this kind of magical figurative work that uh, is autobiographical. I identify with that. We have a granddaughter living in Houston. She has her own little company. It's a performing artist company. And she does work on hoops and high wires and silks, she calls them, mm -hmm. kind of tapestry things. Right. And she sends us things on Facebook and right. things of that mm -hmm. nature. It's fast. And she does a lot of uh, face painting. Your mm -hmm. children do that too, don't they? Well, they do. Uh, my daughter Adelaide, who's an artist, was just on national TV. It was called Skin Wars. It was on the game show network. And out of, in Los Angeles, out of six artists, they chose her to be on this national program. And basically, they painted uh, female bodies uh, live on national television. Okay. So that's a big thing right now, too. Good. I should mention our granddaughter's name is Kennelly Kendrick. Kennelly Kendrick. we can Google her, and we can okay. see her doing some And of my daughter's things. name is Adelaide, artbyadelaide.com. Good. Art by yeah. Adelaide. Art by Adelaide. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, we want to promote your work. Oh, and well, your thank you. You're work. doing a good job. God bless you. What a wonderful program you have, Leon. <laughs> okay. So we have any other persons on the, some of these pictures that you want to, um, to point out before we... Well, there's another one called this. Perfect Balance. And earlier in the program, you were talking about the philosophy. Right. Well, in order to be a good artist or a good husband or a good friend, uh, we have to be in balance. So the one called Perfect Balance is basically uh, from a Buddhist quotation that says we should be like a musical instrument. And if our strings are too tight, it sounds terrible. If our strings are too loose, it sounds terrible. So we have to be perfectly balanced and perfectly in tune. So this one painting is of a, a woman who has flowers and fruit around her, and she's in balance with her mind, her body, her soul, and her spirit. So people think that artists just sit around and paint all day long but you have to be healthy. I'm also a vegetarian, okay. you know, so I'm, I'm very compassionate about, you know, how we treat animals and uh, what we do to our own bodies. So all these things put together, you know, uh, being an artist, being a philosopher, you know, believing in love, you know, all those things make my, my paintings, I believe, more pure. And, uh, you know, without being in balance with your mind, body, and spirit, um, your, your artwork might not be as good. You right. know, it's really important that you're healthy. What are you working on now? What are you painting now? Well, uh, I just finished a piece because uh, when the opening of the exhibit, uh, my daughter Lelania, who's also an artist, um, her and I were photographed and I, in this jacket, uh, and, uh, and, and we were at a carnival. And so it's a painting of her and I uh, in a carnival with a Ferris wheel behind her. And, and then we have Mount Crystal Ray, and it's kind of a fantasy, but it's four feet tall. And, um, you know, again, I'm inspired by, by my daughter, and she has a, a black top hat on. And it was inspired by the opening of fo a photograph that uh, someone took of my daughter and I, Lelenia. Well, now, before we leave this place today, we uh -huh. want to be sure we step outside, as you right. mentioned a while ago, right. a big billboard out there in the area where Alfresco Friday right, takes place right. with between a lot of the, musical right events. between the museum and the uh, Plaza Theater, there's a 7 by 15 foot uh, billboard that will go out there and, we'll, and you and I will get photographed in front of it. And it's, uh, it's, it's wonderful what the El Paso Museum of Art is doing for their local artists. They're going to leave that up until, until this event January, is over? Until January 24th, yeah. Okay. I, I noticed, uh, I had a thought as I walked up to this building today, the Vaquero was missing. We used to have a nice artwork out there in front that I think uh, the lady that is with Walmart Corporation uh -huh. bought to take down to uh, Arkansas. Oh, is that the one by Luis Jimenez? Yes, the, the Jimenez, the Vaquero. Right, yeah, the yes, Vaquero. yeah, that was, that's sad. But we have a, 
a nice modern sculpture out there in his place. Right. right. And then, of course, uh, refurbishing of the alligators. Right. If they'll ever finish the plaza reconstruction. Oh, you know, the alligators are, are here. They're in storage uh, waiting for, the, for the, the park to get ready. Okay. So we yeah. look forward to that. Right. Anybody yeah. in art is interested in it. Uh, tell us how you feel about supporting some of these smaller art galleries. Well, you know, we're, we're celebrating our 20th year in El Paso, so we're kind of like the premier gallery. Uh, but, you know, for a city this size that has about a million people, you know, when you think about uh, Juarez and El Paso, right. we really only have about, you know, a handful of art galleries that are, that are, that are struggling to survive. And, and, and it's, it's sad, you know. So, you know, people who have the opportunity to support what they call pop-up galleries, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they should do so because we have a lot of talented people in El Paso. You know, the, the Chicano Park over there underneath the freeway is a fine example mm -hmm. of, of Chicano artwork. And, um, you know, there are people, you know, need to support all the arts, not just, you know, not just painters, but, you know, the music, the literature, because uh, we have a, a wealth of, of cultural um, activities on any given day here in El Paso. All right. I've done several programs over the years uh, with some who have done murals mm -hmm. outside on the right. walls of buildings, such as right. for La Fe right. and some of these, or at the community college, some right. inside buildings, some outside yeah. buildings. And I've been thinking about getting these DVDs, some of them copied, so I can leave some of these archived here at this museum or the International Museum of Art so that where people can see them in the future. Right. This one needs to be archived so people can see this in the right. future. Right, that's really important. There's some beautiful things uh, out and about. People drive around. They can Downtown, there's some beautiful uh, murals. Yeah, one of our friends, Bill Rackesey, died recently. Right. And we have a retrospective of his work coming up uh, pretty soon at the International Museum of Art. So we need to let people know that we're right. here, that right. you're here. Well, that's why we have your program, so we can find out what's going on. That's what it's about, just little yeah. snippets of what's happening in El Paso. We have about two minutes left. Hal, any concluding thoughts before we close this out? Well, I just want to thank the El Paso Museum of Art especially, you know, for uh, doing uh, their work in, in uh, promoting uh, local artists. You know, we have lots of artists in El Paso, and, and many artists have passed away, like Bill Rackesey mm -hmm. and many others. So it's important to, to do our research, to publish uh, papers, to publish books, and to support the, the local community. Um, and, you know, my gallery, you know, uh, always has early El Paso art on, on exhibit, you know, so we are we try to document and we uh, we have started a foundation here at the El Paso Museum of Art oh, okay. where people can uh, donate uh, money, actually, for the uh, study and the preservation of uh, art, of uh, artists who have already died and gone on. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, I think, is a very important part of us saving some of our visual uh, history uh, and culture uh, because cities like like Santa Fe, who have very small population, have 200 art galleries. Yeah, I've been to some of them. Yeah, and El Paso, <laughs> you know, has got a dozen. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's important to try to, uh, you know, preserve our, our, our heritage in the arts. Well, we're glad you stayed here in El Paso. We are not as prosperous as Santa Fe or some of those other places that you mentioned. And so we're glad that you've stayed with us. Oh, El Paso has a rich history, and, you know, there's a lot of exciting things happening. Okay. Well, I want to tell you that we have an artistic crew that helps us put this together for Marco, Lara, and the others that are here with us today. Thank you very much, and thanks for being with us on Perspectives El Paso. I'm Leon Blevins. <music>